Hey, Shortwave listeners, welcome to part three of Scanning the Bands, the 11 meter band, or what I've subtitled Free Banding and the Signals from Jupiter. So, hope you stay tuned for that. If you're new to this channel or this is the first time you've seen these videos, it might be worthwhile going back and checking out my first two in the series, the 170 meter band and the 35 meter band. Those two may provide a little more context on the overall approach for looking across all of these different bands. And if you look at, look at that chart, you can see all of the different bands that we'll be covering. And as I mentioned in the 35 meter band, my goal here is to cover some of the most unusual bands first. An 11 meter band definitely falls into that category. So just what is the 11 meter band? And I mentioned this in the previous videos that these are somewhat arbitrary divisions between the bands, but I've chosen uh, 25.5 to 28 megahertz as the spectrum for 11 meters. And as you can see in this FCC allocation chart, the 11 meter band covers various types of allocations. And you can see what I've diagrammed here. It covers radio astronomy. We have some broadcasting, maritime mobile, land mobile, some fixed allocations up to 28 megahertz, which many of us know covers the free band or those of us who were CBers in the past and use CB radio, uh, the free banding spectrum of about 26.9 up to about 27.5 megahertz. So let's dig a bit deeper on how the FCC has allocated this frequency range, both internationally and for the United States. So as you can see in this table, and what surprised me right away was 25.55 to 25.67 megahertz is allocated for radio astronomy. And I will talk about this later in the video on what kinds of radio astronomy use this frequency range. But also what surprised me was that the 11 meter band includes a broadcasting range that I thought was no longer active. So 25.67 to 26.1 megahertz um, international broadcast is allocated in that range. For the other parts of this table, we'll take a look at what some of these things mean. Remote pickup, low power auxiliary, uh, private land mobile, which we did talk about a little bit before, and ISM equipment. But then, of course, we're going to get to free banding or personal radio as defined in the FCC regulations, part 95, and uh, what, what the 11 meter band really has the most popularity with. And since we're talking about part 95 personal radio, we might as well just start right there in the middle of the spectrum, where in the United States, uh, citizen band radio, which is personal radio, uh, dominates these frequencies. In this case, the frequency range from 26.965 to 27.405 megahertz. And these are divvied up into channels, 40 channels across that frequency range. Channel one being at 26.965. And they're typically about 10 kilohertz apart, but in some instances they, they jump 20 kilohertz. There's a couple of frequencies in there that are allocated, pre-allocated for other uses. And you can see here just um, how busy the free band is. You can see all 40 channels in the spectrum right now. And uh, let's, let's listen to this a little bit. Uh, Texas, 1641 But this is the free band of C being citizen band radio in the United States. And if you were like me growing up, you got a walkie-talkie and you would hear hear these conversations. But here's the real catch with citizen band radio, and you may disagree with me. It is defined in the FCC regulations as part of Part 95 um, that allows people without a license to communicate, you know, two-way communications for emergency purposes or travel. But I would also call this free banding because obviously it's not well enforced, and there are many violations across this band. If you just look at this FCC regulation, you have to know that many of those signals that you saw in the waterfall 
are using a power amplifier, for example. They are not using 4 watts AM or 12 watts single sideband. So personally, I consider that free banding, that you are really just ignoring any kind of regulations and you are just transmitting within the spectrum. And of course, that spectrum is broader than just the citizen band frequency range. It varies across the 11 meter band, all the way down to 26 megahertz and all the way up to 28 megahertz. Where people modify specific radios, sometimes they're 10 meter radios, they're modified so that they can use these frequencies at higher powers. And it's, it's just a free for all. Do people ever get caught doing this? Yes, sometimes it really isn't overly enforced. I think someone has to complain about it. You can see here, here's an example of a man in Oklahoma who was caught and the fine's pretty stiff. You, you will get a warning and if you don't heed the warning, you're gonna get charged in the tens of thousands of dollars. We'll get back to some of the other free banding that takes place in 11 meters, but for now I'm, I'm gonna jump, jump ahead to uh, the beginning of the band. So 25.5 megahertz where an allocation for radio astronomy appears. And this is pretty interesting. Uh, the first question that comes to mind is like, what kind of radio astronomy is allocated on 11 meters? The first thing to note is that 25.5 megahertz is in the range of what radio astronomers call decametric frequencies. So deca, meaning units of 10, means these are frequencies that would be in the range of say 10 megahertz to 100 megahertz within tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, etc. And you can see in this photo a picture of a very large radio telescope array in the Ukraine that is dedicated to decametric radio observations. Here's an example of a paper written that talks about decametric reception of radio bursts from things like Jupiter, the sun, pulsars, other types of uh, astronomical phenomena under 30 megahertz. And in one particular example, we can actually listen to an example of radio bursts from Jupiter. Take a listen. Now an example of Jovian L burst activity. So I know that just sounds like static, but the increasing amount of volume of static going up and down like waves are the actual emissions coming from Jupiter. And if you spend some time online, you'll be able to learn how to build a radio telescope at these frequencies to actually listen to Jupiter. So next up is something I mentioned earlier in the video that was kind of a surprise to me, the 11 meter broadcast band, which covers the frequencies of 25.67 megahertz to 26.1 megahertz. And I thought there were really no more stations on this band. However, there are two, one on 25.8 megahertz and another one on 25.9 megahertz. First up is World Music Radio on 25.8 megahertz, located only broadcasts at 60 watts, yet you can hear it in the United States. Here's an example. The second station I mentioned, which was broadcasting on 25.9 megahertz, is the uh, BBC World Service apparently broadcasting to Africa. And I did find this particular chart showing that for an hour daily it would broadcast on 25.9 megahertz. However, I can't find that on the BBC site directly. So I don't know if they have stopped broadcasting. Maybe you listeners can correct me on this, but I'm not sure what happened to that frequency. But I do think I did receive it on one of the web SDRs. Take a listen. I 
I can't confirm that that's the BBC World Service, but the time seems correct. So maybe you listeners know offhand. All right, let's move on. I mentioned these earlier in the video, and let's take a quick look at these four. Remote pickup or remote pickup units, low power auxiliary services, private LAM mobile services, and ISM equipment. So remote pickup, let's start with that, is, is typically used by broadcasters in remote locations. You've seen that television stations, etc., are at some lo remote location and need to transmit to their base station and provide that new service. And remote pickup units are de designed for that. RPUs are assigned a set of channels from 25.87 megahertz up to 26.47 megahertz. Now, maybe you have received some of these. I think I received an RPU just recently in here in the central US. Let's take a listen to that. I think this is an RPU. If you'd like to sign up, you can go to the Catalyst and uh, sign up. There you go, sign up there, get your tickets for the, for the ball. Uh, two, day, two day event, nothing but lots and lots of fun. And oh, I, have to, I have to acknowledge, the, the altars that's on, on the podium stage is really, they're really cool. If anybody want to talk about the, the, uh, the altars there? Sure. Each one of us made the altars. Actually, this, everything in here, everybody created by the, from the community. We all made the flowers, the butterflies. But here for the, um, for the neutral, this is part of... As you can see, this was on 26.11 megahertz or, or 26.1110 kilohertz. And that's definitely an RPU RPU channel, one of those allocated channels I mentioned. I think this is a station out of Connecticut, but it could be local since it is a RPU channel and it's on FM, which is kind of interesting. So it could be some some broadcast on a mobile location broadcasting to their, their home station. Interesting to note there, if you notice over on the spectrum at 25800, there looks to be a small signal. That could be world music radio. I don't know. Next up is low power auxiliary. Uh, these are devices that were defined under the FCC part 74 that allowed basically wireless microphones and similar devices that are in broadcasting or film production or live theater performances. People who had wireless mics or wireless devices to help make entertainment and broadcast productions. And they were at fre these frequencies at low power I don't know, and I doubt there are any uh, LPA types of devices running at 26 megahertz in the 11 meter band anymore. They may have been in the past, probably in the 60s or the 50s and the 60s when these wireless devices first came out, but I did some research. I could not find anything about running in the HF band. Everything seems to be up at the VHF, UHF range now. Maybe one of my viewers remembers uh, using LPA devices in the entertainment industry. If you do, please add some comments. Other types of devices or things that are allocated on the 11 meter band are these ISM devices or industrial scientific and medical devices. You can see examples here of what they might be. Probably in this case, there's nothing worth listening to in shortwave, but I thought it'd be worthwhile just calling that out that the FCC has allocated channels for these devices, typically in that uh, 26 megahertz, 27 megahertz range. And then quickly, there's private LAN mobile services allocated in the 11 meter band on specific channels. And private LAN mobile radio services are very similar to GMRS, uh, probably an older version of that, but in this case, private LAN mobile services are designed to be used by businesses business to business, or sometimes it's clubs, where you can apply to the FCC, get a channel allocated to you, and then you can buy PLM RS radios uh, that would communicate for an event or for business to business communication. Now these are probably not being used much anymore on the 11 meter band. I'm guessing again, this is gonna be up in the two meter or the 70 centimeter band, um, but Interesting to see, there still are PLRM RS radios out there, and just take a look for those. All right, let's wrap up with some mystery signals on the band. First up are either free banders or these are maybe dispatchers in other countries, um, both in the broadcast spectrum of the 11 meter band. Take a listen.
If you happen to know what they're saying, that would help. Maybe we can understand what, what kind of communication this is. If this is just free banding or, or some sort of business, business conversation. You could obviously listen to many of the free banders anywhere above the 20, 27.5 megahertz up to 28 or down below uh, 26.9, 26.8. There's many conversations going on in those bands. If you tune across those frequencies, you'll be able to hear all kinds of conversations, either in um, USB, LSB, AM, all types of signals. And last up are some mysterious signals. Now, I don't know if these are faxes. I don't know if these are over the horizon radar, um, but they're very unusual signals in this band. Take a listen. Maybe some of you astute shortwave listeners out there know what those signals are. The last one to me sounds a bit like a fax. Uh, I don't know, but whether these are pagers, fax, over the horizon radar, it would be really interesting to know. So if you know something about that, uh, be, please add something to the comments. Well, that's it for the 11 meter band. I hope you enjoyed uh, part three of scanning the bands. I'll continue to do this. I know it took me a little longer this time, but hopefully I can get back to this and get these other ones out. So please subscribe, keep listening to Shortwave, and have a great day. Thanks.